Hello everyone and welcome to Learn with Jason, a 90 minute live stream where I pair program with an industry expert so that you can learn something new. Uh, today on the show we have Dan Mall, one of my one of my favorite speakers out there, one of uh, one of the brightest people in the industry. Um, just a, a really just overall great time to talk to Dan. Dan, thank you so much for coming on. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm uh, excited and terrified about what we're about to do. <laughs> Good, good. Oh, wow, y'all didn't waste any time whatsoever. Cool, okay, here we go. This is, it's going to be one of those types of episodes. <laughs> okay, so for, uh, for those of us who are not familiar with your work, um, do you want to give us a little bit of a kind of a background? Yeah, sure. Um, I run a, an agency, a distributed agency called Super Friendly. Um, I'm the only employee of Super Friendly. Everybody else is contractors or other agencies that we partner with. And we try to bring teams together for clients that we work with, teams of specialists, teams of people who are really good at specific things that that client or that project needs. Um, we mostly do design systems. I would say 98% of the work that we do is helping our clients make better products through design systems and being kind of systems minded about the work that they do. And really all of that is in service of like, you need to make better things for your customers faster and more consistently so that they have better experiences. So if we can teach them a better way to do that and design systems tend to be one of those ways. Yeah. So, uh, I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions, but before I do that, I'm going to just let the chat. If you've got questions about this, because I, I feel like one of the things, uh, my first question for you actually is like design systems is kind of an overloaded term, right? It, yeah. it can mean so many things. So chat, if you're working on a design system or you have questions about design systems, this is a really good opportunity to get great insight. So make sure to ask those questions. Make sure to uh, to, to participate this episode. You're going to get a lot of insight here. Um, so Dan, I I would love to know like, Design systems is a really overloaded term. So from your perspective, what, like, what do you consider a design system to be? So I think there's a couple of different approaches to this that I've seen lots of people have. Some people are like, we need to define this very strictly mm -hmm. so that we know what it is and what it isn't. And then I think the other side of the spectrum is like, let's be very generous about it so that it's okay if it encompasses a bunch of things. And I kind of fall on that side of the spectrum. Yeah. So it's like, so my take on design system is, I think it's the smallest set of components and guidelines that any organization needs to make digital products better, right? So like that leaves a lot of room for interpretation and that's sort of by design. It's like, is Photoshop a design system? Sure, like it can be, you know, is a, is a component library part of a design system? Absolutely. So anything that helps you make products more consistent and, and make them better and make them quicker, um, you know, I think that that qualifies as part of a design system. Now, there are some things that like sort of blur the edges of that. And I think mm -hmm. we'll probably get into that during the episode, but I tend to favor some pretty generous, like much more inclusive definitions of that, that, that say like anything that's helping you make it, make a thing better, more, more systems minded. Um, I think that qualifies. Yeah. So, so I, and I like that. I mean, I think it's, it's always, I find that anytime I try to put something in a box, I end up regretting it because I'm like, well, here's a good definition. And like that definition totally worked for me. And then somebody's like, well, my shop does this. And I'm like, ah, well, that's also true. Like, right. They're like, but you said this. And I'm like, well, you, you, you're right. But like, so yeah, I, I appreciate that. Um, so we've got a couple questions coming in. So uh, do company product or, dom or domain uh, affect the way that you approach design systems? Absolutely. I mean, uh, if you think about a design system for, say, you know, Google, would a design system include voice components or include like physical hardware components? Sure. But if your company doesn't do physical hardware, then your design system doesn't need to have any physical components. When it, eventually when it does or when you do, then you can include some of that stuff. So absolutely, I think that the company that you work for, you know, I, I wrote a post about this called Distinct Design Systems, where like, I think that a design system should be for a specific company like for a specific purpose. Otherwise, we might as well all just use material. Like if material's amazing, bootstrap is amazing. We might as well use all of those things. But like different companies have different priorities, different customers, different needs. And I think that the, the design system should reflect that. You know, if Absolutely. you make, you know, car parts, then your design system should be tuned to helping you deliver car parts. You know, material design isn't particularly good at that. It can help you generally with that, but it's not particularly tuned to making car parts. So it's only going to go so far for you. You should make a design system if you can that helps you deliver car parts better. 
Mm, mm -hmm. um, Programmatico, uh, Atomic Design is is like that's Brad. Um, Brad Frost. Brad Frost thing. Um, so yeah, that's still totally a thing. Uh, yeah. when there's also would you... a couple of flavors of that, right? There's like sure. because there's atomic design, which is Brad's kind of methodology about it's a it's like a way of thinking about how to build websites and digital interfaces. But then there's like atomic CSS, and mm -hmm. there's like atomic other things that are not the same thing. And a lot of people, I think, blend all of those together. They go, "Oh, I'm using atomic design," when what they mean is like I'm using atomic CSS. Uh... And those are different. So. All of those are things, but I, I should say here that I think they're all separate things. All of them have their own different kinds of value. Yeah, for sure. Um, so actually, here's a great question. So when would you consider using a design system? Um, and and the, I think the distinction here is like, if you're a big company in product, or like, would you also use one you're a really small, like a really small team? Uh, Again, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with my very generous, inclusive definitions of these things. <laughs> if you if you are trying to make one of a thing, I don't think you need a design system. It would help. I don't think you need one. If you're trying to make two of a thing, I'm gonna go with you probably need one. And and two of a thing might mean like two pages that use the same something, right? So two pages mm -hmm. that might use the same card component or header and footer, like um, you know. It, and it, in that way, when I think about like building websites ten years ago. A PHP include, you know, that's like a form of a design system because I needed the header on over here and over here. So like a, a, a simple server side include, you know, even in SHTML, like that's a, that's a form of design system too. So anytime mm -hmm. you're making two or more of a thing, I think a design system be, uh, becomes handy there. And, and when you talk about that definition, it actually gets really interesting because now we almost have this concept of like implicit and explicit design systems. Like if you're writing React, you almost assuredly are using some kind of a design system because you're writing components and you're sharing those components. So you, whether you meant to or not, have created a design system in in yes. that sense of the of the word. Um, and so so then it it doesn't become a, a question of whether or not you have a design system. It becomes a question of whether or not you've been thoughtful about your implementation yeah, of that totally. design system. Absolutely, because like Ooh. you could have a really terrible design system that's impossible to reuse. That's still a design system. It just sucks. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like people aren't going to want to use it. So you know, there's definitely a lot of conversation about how to make a good, useful design system. You could make a terrible one really quickly and accidentally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's man. That's a good insight. That's a great takeaway. I it, and it's funny because I feel like that's something that you can zoom out to be true in so many cases, like design systems, absolutely, but also just kind of in life, like it, with many, many things, you're not like doing a thing or not doing a thing. You're always making a choice. So it's it's a decision of whether you're going to make a deliberate choice or whether you're going to drift. Right. And, and I think that that's such a um, I kind of realized that about like my my trajectory in my career. I was always going to be progressing in my career, but I, I could either choose to be thoughtful and like work toward the career I wanted, or I could just see what happened if I kept doing my job and I would like, you know, slowly drift toward whatever that end was. And, and uh, yeah, so, okay, all right. So important live lessons today from Dan Maul. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's totally natural, right? I, I forget where this framework comes from, but at some point I stumbled across this like, things happen, right? And they are either deliberate or they're emergent. And I'm like, mm. yeah, that sort of that describes like all of life, right? It's like, and you sometimes you get to pick which one is which, and you know, design systems are no exempt, you know, exemption to that, that, and career choices are no exemption to that. Like, some things just happen because you let them, you you just let it go, and you go, ah, let's just see see what comes out of this. And some things you go, well, no, I need to direct this and control this in advance mm -hmm. to make sure I know what's coming out. So design systems are the same thing. It's like I need to know that this card component is going to be the most reusable thing, and so I'm going to architect the API. I'm going to usability test it. I'm like, I'm going to do all this stuff. And then other times you're like, I don't know. I'm just going to crank out this header. We'll see what happens. So I, actually, that's a great question. Like when when you're I, so I feel like probably at this point you've developed a set of instincts around this. Like you kind of you know you look at something and you know like that's a thing we need to worry about and this is the thing we don't. For those of us who have not developed that set of instincts, what should we be considering to make that decision? Like when when is it worth taking the time up front to really think through something versus go go quick? You know the move fast and break things. Like we'll ship this and see what happens. Or hey, let's slow down. Let's do the testing. Let's do the thoughtful design and and release something really flexible. 
So I think it depends on whether you're trying to learn or you're trying to do something right. Like, so I think that that's like, that's the distinction there. Okay. It's like, I think because the subtext of the question there, which, which, you know, is a, is a very common question. We all ask this kind of question, which is like, how can I learn stuff? The subtext is how can I not do this wrong? Right? Like, how do I make sure that I do this right the first time? And I think that, you know, what, we, what should, to your question, what should we think about there? I'm like, I think we should think about like giving ourselves a little bit of grace and room to be, to mess it up. Mm -hmm. You know, like, how do I know that this header is going to be perfect? I don't, so, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't build it. You know, like yeah. I mean, build it and then see, like the reason that I know this stuff is because I've, I've built these things, you know, hundreds of times. Mm -hmm. Um, it's okay the first time when you first build a design system, you're not going to know if you built that card component correctly. So it's okay. It's all right if you don't, you know? So I think the first thing is like, just give yourself a little bit of permission to go like, I might not get this right. Yeah. That should, that'll be okay. You know, that should be okay. And then once you get past that, then it's like, all right, if, if, because otherwise the pressure's too high, right? Otherwise it's just like, uh, if I don't get this thing right, everything goes down the drain. That's just too much pressure. Mm -hmm. So once we give ourselves the space to go, all right, now what's the MVP of this thing? Rather than spending four weeks on a card component, maybe I could spend four hours on a card component and then start shopping it around and going like, is this good? Is it, you know, can I compare? Can, uh, so that's the way that I teach design and design systems to, to anybody is like, um, first we should like, in order to, to figure out how we can do it well and how we can do it right, let's steal some stuff, right? Like there's, there are other people who are doing this well. You want to know how to do a, a good card component? Go look at material design and bootstrap and Polaris and lightning and, you know, six of those and then see what they all have in common. Hey, you know what? They all use class names like this. Mm -hmm. All right. So that probably means I should use a class name like this. You know, like we should, we can, we can stand on the shoulders of giants and a lot of this stuff, you know, the time when you can't do that is like when you are truly inventing something new from scratch. Sure. I don't know how that I've ever been in that position before. And, and so actually you just brought up something that I think is, is a really interesting, like heuristic here because everything that you said, is if I if I were to be extremely reductive about it, effectively the you know it's if you know exactly what you're supposed to be doing, you know exactly what you're going for. It probably makes sense to think through it and try to get it right. But if you don't have that answer, if you if you have a feeling that you're going in the right direction, but you're not sure, or you're not sure how it'll be reused, then you probably don't want to try to design that because you're going to be guessing at a lot of the the decisions in that design so i mean that's that is ultra reductive but like yeah that and and that also ties back to like the way that whenever i've seen success in being slow and thoughtful about something it's because the definition that we had for what we wanted was ultra clear we had like true false criteria for whether or not we had succeeded it wasn't like well let's try it and see what happens um and every time that we've tried to design something in advance that was a let's try and see what happens it has always ended with us having to rebuild some or all of that work. Um, yep, oh, thank you for the subscription, by the way. That is uh, that is awesome. Very much appreciated. Uh, make sure you spam that boop emoji. Remember, you can bury us in them now. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, did anybody have any other questions, or should we should we start playing around? And actually, chat. We should put this to you. Uh, Nikki in the chat asked earlier: Is this going to be a Figma episode, or is this going to be a code episode? And the answer is we don't know. Um, so what would be useful to y'all? Like, what would you like to see? Do you want to see, you know, how we would how we would design something or how we would organize? Um, let's see. Anyone? No. Repeat. No. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> All right. So let's uh, let's maybe let's maybe switch over into the view mode here. Um, so we'll take a look at my desktop. I pulled up this distinct design systems article. I, I also pasted a link in the chat. It'll be in the show notes. Um, but let's take a look at, I guess we could probably start with, with Figma, right? If we, if we go in and we look at how we would design and let's do something somewhat simple here. Uh, let's design a card for my website. So this is this is what my website looks like. We've got this kind of silly uh, big text with the gradient outlines and um, you know it's it's kind of it's got a light and a dark mode so we've got some some challenges here. Um, 
And now let's say that we want to do like a card for workshops because right now they're just a wall of text. So if we were going to do that, I think I'm logged in. I am logged in. Um, we would want to do what? Like, how would you approach this? All right. So I want to, can I start in a different place? Is Absolutely. All right? all right. So I think that the instinct is, is fine, right? Which is like, we want to design something, open a design tool. Okay. Um, with design systems, that's a little bit different, right? Because design systems are about, okay, so here's where I get more opinionated about it now. Here's where I okay. start to narrow that definition in. I think design systems are about making good software, making good okay. digital. And Figma is a great piece of software that doesn't help you make software. It helps you make pictures of software. So where uh, I'd like to start okay. is let's start in CodePen or let's start in VS Code or let's start in a code editor. Let's, start, let's try to make some software and then use design tools to fill in some design gaps in the software. Okay. So CodePen or VS Code, you know, whatever, whatever you prefer. We can do, yeah, let's do a CodePen. This, is, this will be fun. All right, um, cool. So we'll, we'll just start in the HTML box for now. Um, okay. and, we'll, you know, and, we'll, and we'll see. So we're going to jump back and forth, I think, between your site and between, between um, CodePen. Um, the first thing I would do there is like not even write markup but I would just make a plain text list in HTML. So like, let's look at, you know, where, where do you have the card component? Yeah, I think you have one on the homepage, right? Well, this, so there, there are two, actually, this will be interesting. So there are like two kinds of cards. This is a, an episode card, right? And then I have my upcoming schedule cards. And then I have uh, these workshops that I, haven't designed at all. I just, this right now is, I was like, I need to get something up because this workshop's happening in a week. <laughs> so this was like plain text, right? So yep. um, looking at this, actually, here's, here's maybe the first question. Should I be looking at these as like one card with, with variants or should I look at them as, as distinct components? So very quick. So let me, let me zoom out for a sec to say yes. like, all right, let's, let's analyze what just happened here. We went very quickly from doing something that was right versus right versus wrong. And like, now we're talking about writer versus wronger, right? It's like, sure. how flexible should this card be? And you sure. don't know the answer and I don't know the answer, right? So what, what it means here is that we're going to take some guesses. So you, Jason, you have all the, all the knowledge about this. And okay. like one of my design principles, is to move knowledge to where, or move authority to where the knowledge is. So between you and me, even let's say, let's say I, ha I have 10 years more experience than you, I still think you should make the call because you have more knowledge about this. Like I've been to your site, you know, a handful of times, you've been to it, you know, thousands of times in your building <laughs> and designing and all that stuff. So you should make this call. So if you had to pick right now, would you say you want to make an ultra flexible card that will cater to all scenarios? Or does it feel more, more plausible that you're like, I don't know, we could have like two or three different kinds of cards. Uh, I think we could have two. Cause like these ones okay. feel basically the same to me. Like if we, if we look at really what's happening with these cards, there's like a simplified version that doesn't have a description. There's always a big image title description and a link. Whereas with this one, it's the same thing. It's big image title this extra little tag for who the guest is, description and a link. Um, cool. So let's, let's, let's jump to CodePen then. Okay. Because right? like exactly what you just said, I'm like, that's a great starting point. Okay. Which is in CodePen, in the HTML, bo in HTML box, I would write exactly what you just said. Image, you know, and plain text. Image, title, description, link. Okay. And then we have uh, sometimes a date guest, I think that's it, guest, date, and on the latest episode, but that would be like the date, oh, or so not even like a, a date, but like a top tagline kind of thing. Okay. Cool. So th those are optional, optional fields, essentially, right? Yeah. All right. So, so if you look at what's in the preview window, to me, like that's the V1 of the card. Okay. Or whatever, V0.1, <laughs> however we want to version this. That V0.1. This is a card. We have a card pattern. Do we have a good card pattern? Absolutely not. <laughs> like, the terrible, like, it's awful. But that's V1 of our, of our card. So now let's work on V2 of our card. Now let's iterate. Like, now we're done. So we just made a card in 10 seconds. Great. We didn't make a very good one. But good is relative. So we can always work on good forever. 
yeah. So let's make a let's make a V two of of our card now, which is like, all right, let's take those first four things and let's mark mark them up somehow. Okay. A very rudimentary markup on that would be like to put break tags in between each of them. Right? That still wouldn't be very good. People who are seasoned developers and designers like you and me, we know like we can kind of jump ahead a couple steps. We can go, oh, this is probably a heading tag. This is probably a paragraph. This is probably a div. This is probably a section. You know, whatever those things are. So okay. my next step is what's you know what's your what's your best guess on markup for those things right now? So I'll just pull over. We'll just recreate this card. All the info here. All right, and then we'll have like an H2 or something. Then we'll have a description. And then we have our link. I guess I don't really need to copy this link address, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. Why not? Let's make it work. Um, then watch this video. Okay. So pretty cool. Gets that gets us there. We're you know it basically looks the same. <laughs> that's a, that's a, well, that, that, that's a better card than our first version. Yes, absolutely. Because right? like, yeah, it's at, least, at least got the image in there. It's got some content. It's got some structure, some visual structure to it, and also non-visual structure to it too, right? That's mm -hmm. important. Okay, so now let's work on V3 of our card, which is like, what would you do to make this card even better than what we have right now? You got ideas? Um, I mean, we'd probably want to add... So I would go to styles next. Okay, cool. What, okay. what would you do? I would add Because my... essentially what you're saying is like, it doesn't look good enough yet, right? So I need to make it look different better yeah and so, what so would you, what would you do? let's see now i've got like i don't even know if we would need any like global styles yet but we would need to get the image so here's a question when do you start worrying about class names because like this is where i fall down the rabbit hole i start like yeah. pre-optimizing i'll be like oh well i should like design my my class name structure i should get this into react so i can do scope styles or, or something like that um where do you where do you want to introduce that uh, and this is just a personal preference. So this isn't like a recommendation for anyone. For me, I like to work like outside in, like work on the biggest stuff and then slightly okay. smaller and then slightly. Sm so to me, I'm like, let's, let's, let's save class names for later. Okay. Yeah. So that would be the next thing that I would do is like, I don't know, like the full width card feels uh, wrong or <laughs> somehow, or like feels like we could do better than that. So I'm like, I would put a, a max width on it. That was just a random number that I picked, like, uh, you know, 400 pixels. And just to see like, Let's see how that goes. Okay. So I think that that's better than the previous version. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. All right. So like, so I, that's kind of, that's kind of what I mean about like working inside in. Like, what I wouldn't do right now is style is create that link style right now because it feels so small. It feels like you know, let's work it, let's work outside in. That one of the next things I would do is I would go. I think that that card maybe needs like a border, you know, or something, or like a border and a shadow or something like that. Okay. And here's where for me. I don't know that I'm good enough of a developer to, to work in the browser in that way. You might be, other folks might be. So what I try to decide is like, where's the fastest, least expensive way to work? Is it in the browser or is it in Figma? So for you, it might be in the browser. For me, it might be in Figma. Okay. So that, and to me, neither of those is the right answer or the wrong answer. It's just like, where can we be fastest? You know, where can we be the, the, the most expressive right now? So let's, let's say it's Figma right now, because I want to okay. show just for the purposes of this, how would you jump from here to Figma? Yeah. The thing that I would do here is, um, I, th I can't see exactly, but it's, it looks like there's a little bit of margin on the page, the page edge, right? It's like the image doesn't go all the way up to the page. There is, yeah. Okay, cool. So I would just bump that out just a little bit more. Like I would put a margin on the page, you know, on the body essentially of like 20 pixels just so I can separate it more from the page. And I'll tell you why in just a, just a minute. Uh, or I don't know, okay. can you try like 100 pixels? Okay, cool. Now, now it gives me some room to screenshot. So what I would do is I would screenshot that and I would now jump into Figma. Okay, got my screenshot. All right, let's paste that in Figma somewhere now.
now I would start drawing around that because I'm like, well, what kind of border do I want? Do I want like a dotted border or a dashed border or like what color should the border be? I don't know. So now I just start drawing. I like, you know, essentially like draw like little mustaches around all these, like essentially graffiti this thing and go, okay. well, what, you know, what should we do with it? And, and, and just experiment here. Because for me, it's faster and more expressive to do this here. It would take me a while in the browser to be like, what's the, what's the border property for this? Or what's the border image thingy that I need? So I would just start messing around here, you know, exactly like what you're doing, you know, and go, oh, okay, I want like a three pixel thing here and then a rounded radius of this and then maybe a shadow or maybe like we do a pattern thing at the bottom or this is where I'd kind of play around. And yeah. this is, this is, you know, uh, Brad Frost and I have like a, a process that we, you know, this is kind of the process that we use in going back and forth between designer and developer. And it's like taking these screenshots, sending them to each other, playing around with them, sending it back, bringing it back into the browser, t doing another screenshot. We call this the hot potato method, right? So it's like, it's a little bit like, oh, your turn, my turn, your turn, like as quickly as we can back and forth to kind of figure out some of this stuff. Yeah. So, so basically like, I like this because what this is doing is it's 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 getting away from like a dogmatic approach and just getting toward um, the more like like creative chaos approach, if that makes sense. And and like as someone who has a tendency to get bogged down in doing things the right way, uh, getting into a position where I have the ability to like just screw around and like do things in a way that is. Uh, not permanent that is intentionally bad so that I am, you know, or intentionally inefficient, uh, where I'm just like trying something, um, that really, it, it kind of like takes a little bit of the pressure off. Like, I don't feel like I'm trying to get this perfect. I'm, I feel like I'm trying to get something that works. And actually that reflects the design process, right? That that's actually more natural to the design process, which is, especially when we're making digital things, does the design artifact is ephemera. We throw it away eventually. So why would you spend time making sure your artboard is the right size? Like mm. what you just did here is like, you just drew a frame and pasted this thing in, or I don't even think you drew a frame. You just pasted this thing in, right? It's mm -hmm. like, because it's ephemera, it's trash. Let's treat it like trash. <laughs> that doesn't mean let's, let's abuse it or anything. It just means like, let's treat it like something that we know we're going to throw away later because we are going to throw it away later. Right. So yeah. I like what you're doing. This is looking pretty cool. It, one idea that I have is like, on the learn with Jason triangle thing, you have like this really thick shadow behind the triangle. Yeah. I wonder if the card should have like a thick shadow like that behind them. It, it would be cool to experiment with that and see how that looks. Yeah, let's do it. I'm gonna, I don't know, how do you, what do I do? I can combine these, I think. And then, that certainly didn't work. <laughs> I can't remember how to do this. Uh, I wanna knock a mask out so that I can make this white because then I can put a, a shadow behind it. Well, let me, let me give you a different way to do that, which yeah. is like if you just copy and paste that same shape and then move it behind it in the layer stack. Oh, I see what you're doing. I see what's happening. And I'm just like, we'll just make it a different shape that's behind it and then offset it, you know, 10 pixels in each direction or something like that. Gotcha. And then we'll make the fill start here. Yeah, and what I would do is on the the top rectangle, I would just fill that with white because right now we don't need to see the contents of it, you know, because it's a screenshot, you know, that you've got. So we don't need to see the contents right now. We just want to see how the shadow effect looks. I mean, that's kind of cool. That is kind of cool. I like that. So at this point, I would stop here and I would go, all right, let's go rebuild that in the browser now. Like, let's okay. let's see how we can how close we can get to that. All right, so we've got. This here, let's switch to side by side. And then I can come into my card and we'll say, do a box shadow of 10 pixels, 10 pixels, no spread, and this color. Okay, that's good. And we can set a border radius of, I think it was like eight. Okay. Um, we'll set that same border radius on the image. Okay. And then we need to set the border. And that border was one pixel solid. Oops, the same color here. All right. And on the image. Okay. And then we need to set some padding. So we'll set a padding of like 15, I think. No, I had it at 20. And then we'll make sure the whole thing. There. All right. 
So that... It's pretty cool looking. Yeah, that came out okay. What the hell is going on with this weird bottom border? Um, oh, I bet I need to make this display block. What the? Okay, I'm not going to overthink that. Cool. Um... <laughs> Let's say that that works. <laughs> okay, so now we have a card. Is it is it a amazing card? Probably not. Is it better than the previous couple versions? Totally. So yeah. like we're getting we're getting somewhere now, and exactly what you're doing is like now c continuing to work outside in. Now like let's get the typography right, let's get the colors right, let's get that link looking good, let's get the letting, you know, all that stuff is the stuff that we would do here to get to the point where we feel like this is a pretty good card, right? This is like five iterations of a card mm -hmm. in five minutes, you know that mm -hmm. that is that is much shorter than it would have taken us to go in Figma design a card. And then at that point, like that, we probably would have taken 15 minutes to do all of that in Figma. And then we still have to bring it to the browser. So like we've already done all this stuff in the browser fairly quickly. And we've used Figma as part of the process, but we're building software now, which is what we're going to use to to create, you know, our and, and uh, use our design system to create. Yeah. So at this point, this is now where I would start thinking about the reusability and class names and kind of stuff like that. So the first thing I would do now is I would say, all right. Like, Jason, let's see if you can reuse this card. Because if you can't reuse it, nobody else can reuse it. Sure. So you have a card now for your you know, homepage. Um, sorry, what kind of card did you call that? Like episode card. Yeah, right? like the episode card. Can you use it as a schedule card too? Okay, let's find out. Let's um, find out. <laughs> so we want to duplicate this, I think. And then we would look at, let's just put this back over here, I think. And then we've got our schedule. So we'll just grab this episode here. And I'm going to collapse the top one so that I don't look at it. And we're going to set this one to be here. And then I need guest. Right. Then we've got a description, so we can pull that over. And we need a calendar link. Okay, so we'll add these here. Okay. And then we'll grab out the image. Okay, so we've got, like, it's, you know, it's not great, not terrible. Let me do um, one quick thing here just to, so we can put them side by side. Yep. Um, so I'm going to wrap these, and then I'll just make our cards. It's going to be display grid and we will do grid template columns um, and we'll set a gap of we'll say like two over here. Yeah. Okay, so now we've got our, our two cards side by side. Um, we can see that it's like kinda working, kinda not. Um, what what do you like about each and what do you think can be improved? So I think that that was the problem. I knew it was something. Okay. <laughs> so um, we so what's working is you know we've got like the images work, the the titles work, descriptions. I'm happy with this is not designed. Um, we haven't figured out how to add the date at all. Uh, so if I add the date up here, um, where was it? This one. We would need some kind of like a date and that would be April um, let me just copy it um, oh hey thanks for the raid much appreciated 
throw this in here. Okay. Um, so now we've got, yeah, so we've got the, the date card, but that feels like it should maybe be like different. Um, this feels like it's not very, like it doesn't feel like it's part of the card. It feels like it's just kind of tossed on there. Um, our buttons are not super, they're not like jumping out at us or anything. So, yep. you know, we're, yeah. Cool. So all of those are great observations and are total. I agree with all those too. For the date and for the guest thing, that's a place where I personally would go back and jump into Figma. And like, okay. I call those spot comps. We're like, okay. we just need to comp a little spot. We don't have to comp, we don't have to have full artboards. We don't have to modify, you know, the, uh, the component that's embedded everywhere. We don't have to do any of that stuff. So I, I don't think that we need to do that now because that might take a designer, you know, 15 minutes to figure out like, oh, if I push this around and I move this to the side, like it might just take a while to dissect some of that stuff. Sure. But that's where I would kind of jump back and forth. So that, that is a design task. Let's figure that out in a design tool. What okay. you're doing right now is kind of a development task, right? Because essentially what you've done in, in the commented out HTML section is kind of work on the component API, right? Like if you want to think about it that way, it's like mm. here are the required fields, here are the, pro the required props and the optional props. Like, um, so, and, and, you're, and you're learning things by doing them here. You know, as you've implemented them, you're like, well, this isn't figured out. This feels, you know, this feels not important enough. And also things like, you know, you said the buttons aren't prominent enough. Should watch this video and add to Google Calendar be the same button? What do you think? They definitely could be. Um, you know, because because what I'm realizing as as we were looking is that like there's design inconsistency here, not because I did it intentionally, but because that's where it drifted. Right. Um, exactly. So, so, so now being more is, intentional. Yeah. Do you bring them back in line, or do you allow them to stay? You know, to stay as variants of one another. Yeah. Um, so I, I would say we probably want consistency, right? Like, let's try to get a, a standard feel throughout the show. I think that would be good. Um, and before we move on, I think we, we've got two really good questions here. So Ali Pixel asks, what if you start from the amazing phase right away? Like find something beautifully designed on Dribbble or CodePen and then tweak it to fit your unique design. Uh, and the, the specific question would be like, shouldn't this be much faster? It's a great question because sh like the, the premise of that question is, if you already have some sort of system in place, doesn't this stuff become faster? And the answer is absolutely it does. It totally does. You know, what we're doing is we're, we're creating a system from scratch. That's gonna be the slowest part. Mm -hmm. If we already know what a card should look like or even a, a piece of that card, if we know what the date should look like or the button should look like or the description should look like, all we gotta do is drop that in. Like that's, the, that's where we realize the value of the design system is we can use something, we can reuse something that has already been created. If nothing has been created, then you have you're left to kind of create it on your own. So if we had taken a, a dribble uh, screenshot or something or something from Behance, like it would have been easy to kind of build that out. But there's there's one danger that I want to flag in that is that like there's there's always this like this um, preconceived notion that like the designer should figure out all of the things, like all of the problems should be solved in Figma or in Photoshop or in Sketch or whatever it is, and then all the developer needs to do is just build that has worked on you know more than two projects knows that like there's just some stuff you can't anticipate in a comp sure right? and the way that you figure that out is you go all right well i need to take this card and i need to make a schedule card from the event card that's been designed absolutely oh, the schedule card needs this other thing on it now what should i do and the designer you're like designer and the designer's like on vacation right because like no oh, i made the comp I'm, I'm sitting on a beach somewhere so like this process encourages all of that stuff to happen real time at the same time and maybe, mm. maybe not real time it could be could be asynchronous but this process of kind of hot potato allows, let's say I'm the designer and Jason, you're the developer. It allows me to go, yeah, you're right. I, I didn't really figure out that date thing. All right, let me go back and do that. You know, or I don't know, I don't have any ideas for that. Jason, you have any ideas for that? And you're like, well, what if we put it on the side here and made it a little badge? Oh, okay, that's cool. And you're like, actually, I could just do that in CSS. I could just do that really quickly. Like, let me make it square and like about, you know, 50 by 50. And then I'm like, that's pretty cool. Let me go cut you a 50 by 50 icon that you can you know throw in there or something like that yeah and it just yeah all of that stuff totally that's yeah and now you're already giving me ideas like the badge thing that's a great idea um so uh one more question so tamaz asks how do you handle optional elements in a design system component like this for instance if you knew that the episode will happen soon but there's no date yet um i have an opinion on this which is that yeah. like for my for my site 
I won't list things until I have all the information. So for me, the the component or the the data that we're using is kind of like my gate for whether or not it gets published. Because I kind of consider it like if I don't have the data I need to list the episode, that episode's not finalized yet. We're not ready to announce it, and it might change. Um, so that's typically what I what I do. Um, yeah. yeah. So that's yeah, that's definitely like where I kind of stand on it. What about what about you? Do you kind of the same so like kind of like what we're doing here we're letting the content drive all of the things right the the tech yeah. decisions the design decisions the publishing decisions i i favor that approach because i think that without the content it's like what are we making we're just you know we're just playing around yeah and so so i, I want i like to let the content dictate that too there also are times where like you know there are optional props right like a card may not have a guest and so i think like what we're talking about here is like api design you know what is the api of this card and I think as we get into abstracting this more, which I think we'll get into probably in a few minutes, is like, what's the class name on this? You know, sure. what do we what do we create as the prop on this? Like, do we make it required to the, you know, do we lint basically that way or do we not? So those are all kind of API decisions that also are kind of driven by the by the content. It's like, is guests optional? In this case, if we're gonna make this the same card, yes, because on a schedule, you may not have a guest, right? Mm -hmm. So like, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be able to publish the card. right? Um, other things like title seems like, yeah, that seems like that would be required, you know, that it should mm -hmm. not build unless I have a title. So I think that like all of these decisions are ones that we can kind of talk about together in designing the API for this. That's not just a developer decision and it's not just a design decision. It's kind of for both of us to figure out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Resource 11, uh, th this will look like a button. So, so what this does is when you, when you click this button, it uh, opens up Google Calendar and, and helps you create an event. So that's totally going to look like a button. Um, and then, yeah, the, uh, let's see, do we, do we miss any other questions? I think we are good. Um, yeah. So like to, yeah. So to, to kind of go back to what you just said, like we, we had talked about the idea of like, we've, so we've hit a point where we have a question mark and we, we can kind of make a decision how we want to do that. Like, should we try to design it in, in the browser or do we do, do the hot potato, as you said? back to Figma. And I think it, it makes sense here, especially for the sake of illustration. Let's pretend that we're a designer and a developer, right? So I'm, uh, I'm the developer. I got this card design and I'm, I'm doing a new use case. And like, here we go. We just found some stuff that doesn't work. We have to figure out what to do with this, um, with this, uh, this date. So at this point you would, what you just like pull it back in or like, are you going back here and just saying like, Hey, what if we make, you know, a, a date thing that goes over here? And, you know, we can, we can put, let's see, we'll put this on there for now and then make this white, add a stroke. Okay. Right. Okay. So that's, that's already, um, not really doing what I wanted it to, but it's like, it's kind of cool. It's kind of there. So let me stop you here for a second. Please say do. Like, when, when, <laughs> when, like when you talk, when we talked about making a badge, that's totally not what I had in mind. Ooh, all as, right. As soon as you drew it there, I was like, oh, I never even would have thought about that. So I'm like, well, I can make that idea better with my design knowledge, you know, like, but I wouldn't have had that idea without you. So again, this is why, this is why like doing it this way is a helpful way is because like, it wouldn't have occurred to me to put it there. I would have put it right underneath the image. Like, cause that's what my bag of tricks has told me. Like, I would have put it next to the title or something like that. I don't know oh. if that's better or worse. But I so done that. You mean you like know? down here somewhere? Yeah, totally. And I don't know if that's better or worse, but like, that's where my instincts would have said to put it. But sure. I kind of like yours better. <laughs> I kind of like where you put it better. Cause I'm like, maybe it needs to be more prominent than that. And if it's so prominent, it's going to take, it's going to eat up the inside of the card space. So like, I don't know, maybe over there is, is pretty good, but like doing this real time allowed us to have that kind of, you know, that riffing moment. Yeah. The no, that's thing, one, one more thing that I'll share if, if you don't mind, please. Um, one of my other principles in doing this is like when possible, use your words, right? Like if we could solve this with words, we cut out so much time, like useless time from this process Yeah. because what, what ends up happening is like designers will go and hang out in Figma for hours. You know, developers will be coding for hours. And I'm like, yeah, we could have like brought this back into Figma, but I think an easier version, like what I try to go to first is I try to use the phrase kind of like this, 
So I'm going to paste something in our, in our Twitch chat. I'm yes. going to say, uh, oh no, I need to log into Twitch. <laughs> can I send you something in Zoom? Uh, you can, yeah. All right, let's do that. In the meantime, I'll log into Twitch. So check right. out that link when you get a chance. I'm I'm gonna have to transcribe oh. because I'm between computers <laughs> I'm when I do this, but that is that's uh, totally fine. I can vision here. C six seven five seven one three five dash twenty nineteen. Oh, that's cool. So like, it rather than me spending time in Figma to comp this up. Yeah, because this would take me—I don't know—that's going to take me thirty minutes to actually get. I might say to you, like, "Hey, kind of like this. Like, how about something like this? And let's put it in the same spot that you put it in." And then you're like, "Yep, cool. I'm going to go build a div for that, you know, and I'm going to fill it with, you know, neon green to say like this is a placeholder." And then while you're building all the rest of the stuff, now I can go and work on a bunch of graphics for you. You know, like we have—I can work on numbers. You know, exactly. You can put that in as a placeholder. Even in CodePen, you can go and do that in, as like a shape, you know, if you want. Mm -hmm. And then you, you're free to carry on, you know, keep, keep on rolling. What I can do now is I can go, all right, I'm going to spend an hour or two just cutting you individual numbers, you know, zero through zero through nine. And then later on, we'll figure out how to assemble all of those later, you know, later on in the build. But it doesn't hold you up. You're not dependent right. on that because you have the idea. You know where we're going with it. You can continue building, you know, while I can continue designing in parallel. Cool. Very cool. Um, so yeah, that, so then we would be able to do something like if we give this an address, uh, then I could do something down here. Like, uh, this is going to take way more markup because we're going to have to figure out how to do a lot of different stuff in here. So, um, yeah, let's see, we can just kind of drop it. do like make this position relative so that we can move it around and then here we can make this position absolute um milan asks a good question is this the way that you interact with the your like clients and, and developers yeah it's a lot of hands-on like doing this real time doing this actively now let me let me take a step back from that not all the time Right. So it's not like the whole build process is like that. That would be infuriating for everyone. Like, you know, could you imagine doing this for, you know, days and days and days? It would just be tough. Sure. You know, people need alone time and quiet time to get stuff done. So this stuff that you're doing, right, you know, when you're like, I need a bunch of markup to be able to do this. You can't do this. I'm talking in your ear, you know, for hours. <laughs> like, there's no way you're going to be able to do this. So there are going to be times in the process where we should build things like this together. And then the detail work, we probably will do independently. And that'll be like, all right, I need a couple hours to kind of jam on this thing. You need a couple hours to jam on that thing. And then we'll come back together, maybe do another working session like this. So it's this like this accordion style thing of like coming together and then breaking apart and then coming together and then breaking apart, you know, and trying to trying to get into a good rhythm of that, you know, not always working together, not always working apart. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I do like that. I'm a big fan of, of that kind of, you know, we we want to collaborate a lot, but it's not, it's not the sort of thing that you have to like always be on top of each other. It's not that, that forced cross, like cross, um, functional collaboration. It's, it's like you're cross functional when you need to be and you're independent and working on the things that you're best at when you need to be. And it's, Absolutely. it's trying to identify what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are. So like my strengths are that I can, I can write out this code pretty fast. My weaknesses are I don't have the, the depth of design knowledge to know what I should be coding. And so, like, I, you know, I, I need to rely on you to direct what I'm coding and not saying, like, oh, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. Because, sure, I can make something. But, like, we see what I do when I'm unattended. It's fine, right? It's not like this doesn't look considered and, and well designed. It looks like something that was thrown together by a dev, which is what it is. Um, and so I think that that's, that's something that I think gets um, skimmed over on a lot of teams is this idea that like designers toss something over the wall to the developers and then the developers do everything in their power never to go back to the designers. And there's this weird tension about that. I love it when teams kind of work in a pile. Like 
you know, it's you're you're all part of the same team. You're all working toward the same goals. Uh, it's just realizing that like one of you should steer and one of you should be, you know, like operating the 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 uh, this lever. You know, and I, I think that's such a it's such a cool feel when you get on a team that does that. Absolutely. There, I think the, the framework that I tend to use for this is like, when should we work together and when should we work apart? We should work together when we don't know what to do. And we should work apart on the things that we already know what to do. Like, Jason, you don't need my help to write the markup and the styles for that thing. Mm -hmm. You do know, you do need my help with what should it look like and what should be the content in there? Because those are things that you don't know. So it's like, we, we should work together to figure things out. And then once things are figured out, but still need to be executed, that's when we can break apart and go in, into execution mode. Yeah, yeah, that totally makes sense. Um, cool. Uh, thank you for the the sub code with potato. I appreciate it very much. Um, so I, I, I think we can probably let's let's leave this because that's going to start yep. getting real finicky here. Um, yep. And maybe we can talk about like, how do you go about doing buttons because somebody brought up a really good point um i can't remember who it was uh resource 11 brought up ex an accessibility issue when we are talking about links and like making links look like buttons and making buttons look like links um we create a, a kind of like cognitive dissonance here so that actually brings up a good point because this link doesn't it performs an action you click this button and it's going to open up google calendar and, and uh invite you to like create don't make me sign in. I'm not okay. I'm not going to do that. It opens up Google Calendar and it asks you to like create an event. Um, this link, when you click it, takes me to watch the episode. So, how how do you approach something like that? We've got a card where the the links are visually similar but functionally different. Yep. So. What the way that I would do that is I would call each of those a variant, right? So let's say. Okay. We'll call all of those a button, right? But like one can be a text button and one can be a graphical button, let's say, right? Naming things are hard. So let's just say that's the best we can come up with right now. Okay. One is a graphical button, one is a text button. To me, they're the same component, but perhaps they have some different props or perhaps they, perhaps they have some different things. And that could be as simple as a class name, right? Button class equals, you know, btn dash text and then button class equals button, you know, whatever, however we want to do that. But to me, they're, they're variants of the same thing. Um, rather than being completely separate elements uh, altogether. Regularly in the design systems that, that me and my teams create, we'll have like eight or nine different types of buttons. You know, for like a pretty robust design system, we'll have like button, button with icon, button with just, you know, text button, mm -hmm. um, button link, uh, button, you know, opens external. I don't know, making some stuff up that, but like all of those are variants on the same thing because they share the same, the same bones. They just have slight variations to them. And so that makes okay. for a good a good variation or a good variant. Now, what you're just doing here, like gets into, well, what philosophy are we going to have around this, right? Are we going to use, is it going to be like all utility classes? It is, is it going to be BEM style? Is mm. it going to, you know, and to, again, that's like writer or wronger, you know, all of those approaches are valid. So what's going to work for the team that's using this? And if the team, Jason, is you, then I would say, I don't know, what would you remember more? And probably what you just did there is probably the thing that you would remember more rather than coming up with, say, like a more verbose BEM syntax is kind of something. Yeah. So right. when I when I was working at IBM, I was a big fan of BEM because BEM was a little easier to document. And also we were using SAS, so it was easier to code, right? Um, for this, ultimately, I'm probably going to end up moving this into React components. So the way that I'm thinking about it is that right here, it's linked like that, but what it will ultimately write is going to be something like this, right? Or or whatever. Um, so yep. these like these props will just be modifiers on it. Um, sure. So that that to me, or you know, we would do even something like this, where it would be like button, um, and then you would put like text or sure. button type external. Some you know yep. something like that, so that we can just check those and and apply additional styles as needed. Um, so that's kind of where my where my mind is and why I'm thinking about it like this is because ultimately these are going to be little collections of styles in React most likely. Perfect. Now, like I would do it completely different than that, but it doesn't mean that I'm wrong and you're right or you're right and I'm wrong. Like it just means that like what is better for our teams. Mm -hmm. I think that's the way to figure out what's good here. Is like sure. you know, for example, I would do it slightly different than you did in the way that we set up our buttons. Is button variant equals 
you know, a variant is an attribute essentially of that, oh. of that tag. And we would say variant equals text. Now, is that better than your way? I don't think so. That's just a different way to go about it, right? It's like- It's more explicit, um, that's for sure. It's more explicit, but it's more explicit. You know, so like it's 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 a double edged sword. And again, that's not any I, to me. That's not any better than what you just wrote before. It's just a different way of thinking about that. Mm -hmm. And it's because my teams are used to that way more than they are used to the way that you wrote it previously. Yeah. You know. So so it's to me like someone asked this in the chat earlier, and we talked about it. Like the company, the the coding philosophy that company has, the kinds of products that you make. Your, your, your house style of the way that you write JavaScript and CSS, like all of that matters in the way that you architect all of this stuff. There's mm -hmm. no like, this is the best way. And then this is, these are inferior ways. It's like, you know, if, if the point of all this is good reusability, sometimes it just comes to like, what are people going to remember? Like, what are people going to guess more frequently than, than, other, than other times? Sometimes yeah. that's a good way to figure out how to architect this. Now that's a, that's a, yeah, that's a great point. Um, so I have a there's a there's a question that I wanted to ask because I think it's a really good question. Uh, Code of Potato asks, how would you suggest building the communication skills like these cross functional communication skills like what you and I are doing here, where where you're talking to me, I'm the development team, you're the design team. We're we're going back and forth and we're trying to like do the accordion. We come together and work for a bit, and then we separate and do work for a bit. Um, for team like having been on teams that do not function like that, what what have you seen be effective for like building this habit? How do you get people to, to cross that bridge? Yeah. Um, the first thing is to like, so there's, there's two kind of opposites or different sides of the same coin. The first one is you have to incentivize it because there are teams that I've worked with, you know, we, we come in to consult sometimes and, the, and those teams are like, we're doing fine the way that we're doing it now, mm. which is like, Oh, but I mean, if nothing's broke, then you don't have anything to fix. So suggesting a method like this, they're like, why would we do it if we're already doing fine. So a lot of it is, has to be like open-mindedness of like teams have to go, well, these are the problems that we have with the way that we do it now. And then you have the ability to say, all right, well, can, would you be willing to try a different way? And then they might say, all right, well, I'm willing, you know, I'm, I might not be fully open-minded, but I'm at least willing to give it a shot. And so the other side of that coin is there is risk in doing this. Essentially, when you ask a designer to do something that they're not used to, or you ask the developer to do something they're not used to, a, good, a general reaction is like, uh, I'm not going to do that. And there's all sorts of baggage that comes with that. There's like, if it doesn't go well, am I going to get fired? Like, mm. is my boss not going to like this? Is the, is the output going to be shoddy? And I'm going to have to work over the weekend to fix it, you know, because I spent the time. So all of that stuff has to be unblocked in order for people to be willing to do something like this. So all of that said, like, if you can overcome those things, then the next thing that I, I try to do is I go, all right, let's try this for four hours. That's it. Because mm. that feels like, all right, I can devote half a day to this. I'm not sure I'm going to do this for a week, though, because if I lose a week, that's detrimental. Right. If I lose half a day, okay, I'm willing to, to, to do that. And then the, with that half day, you know, what we usually see is designers, developers go like, holy crap, I didn't know that we could get to that point in four hours. Yeah. And, and they're more receptive because they see the benefits of it. So I, think, so I think a lot of this is like freeing people from the notion that it has to be amazing, mm -hmm. freeing them from the like, don't worry, it's not too risky. And then showing the benefit, showing the value in a very short amount of time. And then you see teams go, all right, well, okay, we might not be able to do this on this one project that we're doing, but that side project that's coming up next, you know, maybe we could do it on that. We could try it out. You know, you just reminded me of something that was one of the best lessons I ever learned when I was at IBM, which I, I, uh, I had this project. We, we worked on like building out GraphQL on a bunch of stuff. That's a story for another time. But the, we had a lot of trouble getting people to adopt it. And it was a legitimately like better solution. The thing that was happening before took a bunch of work. Everybody was duplicating effort. You had to like go find this, this main repo and then update your code. And then that code would change. And you were required by policy to go get those changes and manually integrate them into their code. It was a nightmare. And what we had built had kind of abstracted all that away so that it would get centrally updated and you would just pull changes and, and it would work. But teams wouldn't use it. And I was complaining and uh, I was in a, a skip level with my like, you know, the senior VP of whatever team. And I just I was telling him about this. I was like, I don't know. I don't understand what's going wrong. And he said, OK, I'm going to tell you a story. I was at a company and we had done exactly what you'd done, taken a bunch of work that was really hard and everybody was getting it wrong. And we'd abstracted away to make it really easy. We couldn't get anybody to adopt it. We kept going around. We'd give these presentations where I would draw on the whiteboard. Here's your system. Here's our system. And here's everybody getting happy, 
Right now, what you're doing is all of this work over here so we can get rid of that and you replace it with our system. People are like, no, we don't want to do that. We don't have time for that. We can't do that. And then he was like, and then I had this, this epiphany. So I went into a meeting and I drew their system and then I drew our system and then I drew the, the happiness result and people immediately started to adopt it. And so the, the takeaway here is like shrink the box, like shrink the problem, make it something that feels small and insignificant. It's not exciting. It's not revolutionary. It's not going to change everything. We're legitimately taking a bunch of hard stuff and we're replacing it with tiny, boring solutions, right? Um, and in, in your case, you're taking this revolutionary way of like, oh, we're going to change the whole way that we work. We're going to, you know, we're going to do all this work and pair programming and, and everybody works together. And you're saying, no, 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 give me half a day. Like, give me half a day and we'll buy lunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Totally. I mean, that, I know, I know that's a joke, but like that last part is so important. It's yeah. like, remove all obstacles. We'll, we'll bring beer. We will bring lunch. You know, like we'll, we will do this in a way that it has the least amount of friction just so you can see it because otherwise, you know, it's the devil, you know, versus the devil. You don't like, yeah. well, if I would rather do the old, more complicated way, because I know it than this new way that's potentially better, but I don't know it. So there's risk in it. You know, so how do you remove all the obstacles from doing that? I love that story. It's like, it's, it's such a great way to think about it is you don't have to solve everything, right? It's just, just give, give people a taste of it mm -hmm. to go, all right, I'm willing to try that. Oh, I see the benefit of that. Okay. I see how that could help me now. You know, some people just aren't willing to give it a shot without that. And so this is why, you know, in all of the tales about design systems, the building the components and designing the components, that's the easy part. If you and I did this for the next three days, we could build a full design system, 80 components. That's not the hard part. The hard part is getting people on board. Right? Yeah. The hard part is like, well, how do we use it? And where does it go? And how do I integrate it? Like all that stuff. So on a regular design system project that we do, let's say that'll be, let's say it's a six month project. We'll spend the first two, three weeks building at least a handful of components, you know, 50 components or whatever. And then the remaining seven months or five months of the project is like just getting people on board. And it's like, you know, literally sometimes like printing propaganda posters that we could hang around the office with the design system logo on it, like all of that kind of stuff to, you know, lunch and learns, doing a road show, like doing internal workshops to get mm -hmm. like train people, like all of that kind of stuff. Um, trading uh, scope and roadmap items with product managers to go, all right, well, our design system team will build this thing and we'll take this off your hands if you can do that. Like all of that politicking, all of that stuff is important to the design system. It's, it's almost never about the components. It's almost never about the design and the build. It's about whether or not people will use it. And so we tend to pour a lot of the time into what is going to make people use this. Yes. I've, I, so I, when I was working as an architect, the, that was the, like, that was the job. It had nothing to do with the code. I've seen so many objectively correct software solutions miserably fail because the way they were communicated didn't make people want to use it. People, you know, people were like turned off on the solution due to all sorts of reasons. Like they didn't understand it. They didn't like the person who wrote it, like all of these reasons. And they're just like, now we're not going to use that. And it's like, well, but it, this is better. It's going to make your life easier. Like, now nah, we're not going to use that. So like, the, it's such a good point that the, the adoption, the talking to people, the showing value in, in the work is so much more important than the work itself. Absolutely. Um, there's a, there's a question here actually that I think is kind of related. Uh, and, and I think it's related in a way that, that is probably not what you intended, but do you check whether or not the developers use the same philosophy as your design in Figma? So like the devs and, and designers are speaking the same language. Um, so like, do you, uh, oh, oh, and there's a, an example, uh, they're working at a design, a design system in a big company and they're being told that they have to make sure that like TypeScript interfaces and Figma components use the same naming. Um, have you found that that is useful? Hmm. That's a lot, a lot there to unpack. Yes, there uh, definitely is. <laughs> okay. So, so the first thing is, it is absolutely useful for designers and developers to speak the same language. You know, otherwise it's like, you know, it's literally like, you know, one, one person is speaking French and the other person is speaking Italian and they have no idea how to communicate, right? Mm -hmm. like, so the, the next question becomes, okay, so which language do we pick? Do we pick French or do we pick Italian? All right, and, and my, my opinion on this is that, and the question sort of reveals a little bit of a bias, I think, which is that, you know, do you get the, the developers to speak the same language as the designers? And I think it's the opposite. 
get the designers to speak the same language as the developers because we are building software and the developers are in charge of the software. The designers are not. The designers are in charge of pictures. So if you get people speaking about pictures, everyone's going to think about them as pictures. Make mm -hmm. the designers talk, talk about props. Don't make, the, don't make the developers talk about what Figma has in Figma. Right? And, and it's possible to make those two the same thing, but I think it should lean towards, you know, if you're building in React, you make the designers use React language, make them talk about that, make them talk about the way that, that you do React work or view work or, you know, whatever that thing is because you're building software. And I think you should orient the whole team towards software. And I think one thing that's really tough about design led cultures is that, is that you get attached to pictures and then you get attached to the wrong thing, which is like mm. where, you know, like, how did we version manage those sketch files? How did like, okay, now we like, let's use abstract. And that's not knocking those kind of tools. It's that it puts a ton of focus and energy into things that are not software. You're not building things at that point. You're making pictures to be able to build things. Mm -hmm. And so regularly, and I know this is, I know this is not realistic for a lot of teams, at least at first, when my teams work on stuff, we don't have any Figma files or sketch files or Photoshop files. We have PNGs that we kick out every now and again that we throw into Slack or IM or whatever. That just get thrown away. You know, we use sure. a lot of Dropler links. We use a lot of cloud, you know, cloud app links that like, hey, kind of like this, check this out. You know, here's a here's a comp that I just spat out. Like, not even a comp, here's a spot comp that I just spat out. And as soon as a developer is done building that, that's trash. It just goes away. Mm -hmm. We don't need to track it down. We don't need to version manage that. We don't need to know what the latest state of that component is. Um, is that we're trying to use conversation to replace the let me move some stuff around in a bunch of Figma files. You know, let me move some stuff around in a bunch of sketch files to try to match and mirror what we have in development. Mm -hmm. If we can talk about what's in development and peer, you know, pair program or pair design or whatever you want to call it. Um, I think you know, Mina Markham has a good phrase for this. She calls it pixel engineering, right? It's like, it's like, Ooh. it's between, it's between this design and development land. It's not design, you know, it's not, uh, it's not um, uh, development. It's somewhere in between those things. Uh, oh man, I hope that she's written about this. Like, I it's such so a too. great That's, phrase. That is so good. I've heard, her, uh, I've heard her talk about it in some of her talks, but I don't know if she's if she's written about it or if it's documented anywhere. Yeah, you. So okay, like whether or not I, I don't think I'm going to be able to find a, a specific reference to this, but you should 100% go and follow Mina on like all of the channels. She is incredible. Um, she, I've seen her speak like three or four times. Every single time that I see Mina speak, I legitimately change the way I work. She always brings something that I'm like, yep doing something different from now on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. Totally. Uh, okay. So um, I, I should also mention your, your very unbiased chat full of all developers is very enthusiastic about this. Make designers do it the developer way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I think that that's, you know, and I feel, I feel good about saying that because I'm a designer, right? It's like if, if a developer got up and said like, all designers should do this, you know, the designers would be like, get out of here, like yeah. get lost. You know, as a designer, I can say this because, you know, I have, I have been in that world. I design, I like, I know, I know what's involved in all that. And I do think that it is, at least from my perspective, it's, it's important to recognize that we're trying to build software. Mm -hmm. So let's build software. Let's be in the software environment as much as possible. And so part of what m my teams and I try to do is like, try to live in Figma as little as possible. You know, it's mm -hmm. a wonderful tool as is Photoshop, as a sketch, as Illustrator. all those are fantastic tools. Let's try to live there as, as little as possible and just do the spot comping or just do the asset generation or just do the, you know, the visioning that needs to be done sometimes cool, but then, but then let's get into code as much as possible. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, God, that's, this is, this is great. This is, I, I feel like I'm taking a lot away from this. Um, no, this is, this is really fantastic. So like what a, uh, it, and what a good lookout too, because it's not, it, this isn't a, a, a question of like design versus dev here. This is, this is a question of how do we get work done effectively? And, and what you're saying isn't that designers need to think like developers. You're saying remove a layer of abstraction. Don't yes. build artifacts that aren't the thing you're building. Build the artifacts and anything else is considered temporary. Um, and yep. I, I really like that because it, it eliminates, like, as, a, as someone who's worked in big companies, the thing that always killed me wasn't what we were building. It was the, the like, scaffolding around what we were building. There was a report to fill out or a, like, 
a thing that wasn't the end result that had to get done because it was part of somebody's checklist. And so what you're talking about here is, is removing the items that aren't shipping from the checklist. And I really, I, I really like that. Exactly. Eyes on the prize, right? Like, what's the prize? It's the stuff that we're shipping. You know, if, if we all want to follow Agile, mm -hmm. right? But one of the, the tenets of Agile is working software over comprehensive documentation. Yes. And if you think about all the things that we make in the process, wireframes, decks, briefs, spreadsheets, you know, all of that stuff, all of it is documentation. The one thing that we make as part of that process that's not documentation, that, that is working software, is code. And yet, who gets the short end of the stick on every project? The developer. They're always at the end of the chain. They get the least amount of time. You know, we spend all this time on the pomp and circumstance of the documentation. But mm. Agile says to spend the least amount of time there. So, like, if we really want to be Agile, we should throw that stuff out, you know, as much as we can. That's not to say it's not useful. It's just that working software is more useful than that stuff is. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also got called out by the chat for saying that all the everyone in the chat was a developer. I know you're not. I'm making <laughs> I'm making jokes. I'm sorry. Um, but uh, yeah, so this uh, I like I don't even know. Where do we go from here? I feel like we've cool, covered got, so much good information. So what a, uh, what do you want to do hole. next? There's a big hole here, right? Because what we've yes. done is we we've, let's say we've made a good component. Yes. Uh, or we've we've started to make a good component. The other part of it is how do people use it? Yes. Because if no one can use it, then it doesn't matter how good this component is, right? There's like, for all you designers in the chat, how many comps have you made that have never seen the light of day? Right? So it doesn't matter if you make something great, you know, if no one can actually use it and put it in production, then it doesn't matter. Nathan Curtis has a great line about this. He says like something to the effect of um, like a design system realizes oh, its so value when, <laughs> is um, right? what is it? A design system realizes its value when it's implemented in real products, right? Something, something to that effect which is like a design system that's just a library of stuff, that eh, doesn't matter, you know, but like, um, but when it's implemented in actual products that ship, that go to customers, that's where the design system actually realizes its, its value. Um, so I think that's the other part of what we've got to do is figure out how to make it valuable to other people. So there's a couple of steps that we have left in the component itself. And mm -hmm. then there's some stuff around the component itself too. All right. So like in the, in the component, like what we haven't done, and you asked about this early on, and this is a good stage for it is um, reusability, class names, you know, that kind of stuff. So can you make one more card on here? Just copy and paste, you know, a third one and then make a third column or, or something like that. Yep. Cause I want to see if we can make a third kind of card very quickly you know, and we could call that, you know, whatever, a workshop card or a store card or something like something else that's on your site. Okay. So we've got our, our three cards yep. and our and let's third put one more, one more type of content in there, like a workshop or something like that. I don't know if that's different enough. No, I think that'll be, that'll be good. So let's, let's get some, uh, some workshoppy stuff. We've got, I'll put this one up. Um, I think I've got an image address here. And this is going to be a different shape of image too. So that'll be kind of interesting ah, okay. to see. Um, so this one, go in here. Okay, so that's, I mean, that we would want that to be bigger, but that's fine. Um, and then we've got here. this the right okay and then we could do something like you know the date um and put in april 15th all right we'll leave it there um and then for the description i'll just grab the first paragraph And then uh, from this, we'll just add the actual workshop thing. Um, and while we're on the topic, today is actually the last day to get early bird tickets. If this is something that you're interested in, um, there is an early bird discount active that will be active for like the next couple hours. It ends at 5 p.m. Pacific. So get in on that if you wanna if you wanna get into this workshop. Um, so here is get tickets. If I can, whoa, where am I on my keyboard right now? There we go. 
Um, and this one would be right. Yeah. Okay. So there's a new card. Yeah. Cool. All right. So now let's look at, we have three variations of cards. I like the number three because it's like, it's a good amount of variation. It's not too many to kind of get your head around. So I like looking at three different, different, different things and going like, what's consistent about all these and what's different about all these. Mm -hmm. So let's say, you know, like, what about the title? Do you think the title is going to be different across all, all of these three kinds of cards? The title will be different. Sorry, not content, but like, is there going to be something that's different from card to card about the title? Or do you think the title is pretty consistent across all of them? I would say the title is going to be pretty consistent. Okay. So in that case, we could probably do like a class equals title, you know, on that, on that element and be pretty sure that whatever some, another developer puts there will still kind of use class equals title, right? Like, mm -hmm. do you, you follow where, what I'm yes, saying? Yes, I same totally, thing with yeah, the, I get what you're saying. The description, right? Probably the same thing too. Mm -hmm. um, so for the description, we could probably do a class of class equals description or something like that. Now, when we think about the button, that's one that I'm like, okay, it seems like there might be three types of buttons there. There's like a button text, which we've already done. There's like a graphical button, right? With like add to calendar. Mm -hmm. And maybe we might even think about like, well, one of them might have like a calendar icon and one of them might have a dollar sign icon or, you know, whatever purchase icon or something like that. Yeah. So now it's, we're thinking about levels of abstraction. Like, should we just call both of those the same like um you know button you know icon button or something like that or should we make them even more specific to say like purchase button and you know date button or something like that what do you what's your hunch so it's it seems to me that what we would end up with is like we would want to say that it's got an icon and then we would also have like an icon of like ticket or something yeah cool that makes um, sense because otherwise, you know, we end up in, in some scenario where somebody's going to be, like, doing this sort of thing. Um, oh, right. And, like, that's, you know, that's all fine. That's not necessarily a bad bad deal, but it's also going to be a little, there's chaos there. Yep. Totally. Um, it's so, hard to make that consistent. So we could, we could do something like that. And then we know that if it's got the icon class that we need to add the, the extra left padding for it. And then we want to inject, you know, the, the icon container and then whatever the ticket or the icon ticket, icon uh, calendar, whatever, will, sh will actually sh tell us what thing to put in there. Right. Exactly. That makes, that makes total sense to me. What I would say at this point is that we have a pretty good button that's shareable. Oh, sorry, not button, a pretty good card that's shareable. That's like, you have tested it in three different scenarios. So I feel like this is a, a at least a good first draft level of abstraction for each of these things. It's like, not a lot of variation in the title and description, lots of variation possible in the button. You know, we might do the same exercise for the image or something mm -hmm. like that. We might also do another exercise oh, no. later on. Oh, God. Oh. oh, please tell me we didn't just dump all that work. But no, it's all here. What's going on? Just going to save again? Come back? Oh, oh man. Whoo! All right. All right. <laughs> We got to restart this whole thing. Oh my God, finish. that would have been just a, oh, my heart, my heart. <laughs> right. Uh, okay, so so we've got a good level of abstraction across all these things, I think, which which means that like you've tested it two times, you know, mm -hmm. because you have an original card and two variations of it, mm -hmm. which means that it's likely that someone else that might have a variation could make another variation or could use one of these three. So the next thing, and I think this is maybe the last thing to do as we kind of wrap up all this is like, now we have to put this somewhere for people to be able to use, right? So let's say, Jason, you were gonna, do you work on this site by yourself? Uh, for the most part, yeah. Okay, let's say you were gonna hire an, an intern or you were gonna hire another another person to like take over the site because you, you, got, you got busy and you're gonna work on something else. Mm -hmm. What do you think would be the, like, and, and I would Oof, suggest- ah, all right, so that's mind. exciting. <laughs> What, what's that? Uh, sorry, my sound effect triggered right as you asked a question. So, what? Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, have a person in mind. So, like, think of somebody that you would bring mm -hmm. on to help you with this. And what would be a good way to communicate all the stuff to them? Like, all the stuff that you talked about, about like, oh, okay, so if we're doing that, we'd have to have some padding on here and we'd have to, you know, accommodate for this. And, oh, in order to have that button with the icon, you need to put this class name on it. Essentially, what would you document and where would you document that? Like, because I think that answer, like people take for granted, but I think it's worth being intentional about that exercise. So like, what do you think, you know, you bring somebody new on, what do you, what do you think is the first place they would go to learn about the site? Uh, I feel like what, hmm, right now, 
there is nowhere. So I would probably be okay. look at the source code, right? Which okay. is not a yep. good, that's not a good answer. Um, uh, it's an, so let me stop you there for a sec. It's an okay answer, right? Cause what it might mean is like, you know, you might, if that's going to be the thing to do, comment your code a little bit, that might, that might be enough for now. Mm. So if you, if you, you know, on that button element, if you just write a little HTML comment that says, you know, here's the API for the button element, you know, it, it's like, it's hacky. It feels hacky, but like, it's something. Cause if that's the first place that they're going to go, if they find nothing there, they're, they're going to be like, well, did I do something wrong? So I think part of this is like anticipating where are they, what are they going to try to reference? All right. So, okay, this is the first, the first thing. And what I try to do is as I'm going along building stuff, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll try to comment right there. Cause for me, what's always the hardest is like building all the stuff and then documenting all of it later. Mm -hmm. I never do the documenting like never, right. <laughs> never, ever, ever. Yeah. I, I think that's, I think we all feel that pain. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, so like, a, and this is a good way to, to just kind of think about this. Like, what, what have you found to be successful uh, as a way of, of capturing this stuff? Like, we definitely don't have time to do it, but what I can do is depending on what you choose, uh, I might be able to do a follow-on episode where we take this nice. work and put it in, um, either with like the creator of the tool you recommend, or maybe you come back if you want to later on. Um, but uh, yeah, like I, I feel like there's probably an opportunity to to continue to like a next step. Absolutely, and I think you know somebody's putting it in the comments now, which is like the first inclination is okay, maybe it's comments, and then the next one is like okay, maybe it's a README file, mm -hmm. and then the next one is like maybe it's more documentation, whether that's like storybook docs or that's like a whole reference site or something like that. What I've found is like all of those are useful. Build a, a breadcrumb trail all the way through. So like you know you have a comment in an HTML comment there about like the button. Maybe in that HTML comment it, it should say like here's the one line description that you need if you're just in here trying to get this done. For more information, you know, see the README file, and in the README file, for more information than that, go see this you know our Confluence page or whatever it is. Like, kind of build a little breadcrumb trail for people to follow, you know, so that so that wherever they look, it's not like ah oh, shoot it wasn't there. So now what do I do? Because that's where we find a lot of this stuff breaks down. It's like somebody goes, well, like, well, I expected it in the README file and it wasn't there. So I assumed that there was no documentation. And mm. the answer can't be, oh, no, 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 it's in our wiki. Well, I didn't even know that there was a wiki. So right. like, I'm going to just do my own thing. And you know what? I'm just going to use Bootstrap. Like that's where people get to that line of thinking is like, well, Bootstrap's documented, so I'll just use Bootstrap. So what we found is like, if you build little breadcrumb trails like that, then anywhere people reference they'll know that it points to something else, you know, and, and that like the, the readme file can point to the documentation and the documentation can point to, you know, whatever it is mm -hmm. so that people like are never lost. There's always some kind of wayfinding, you know, for them to be, to be pointed at. And then, yeah. and the, you know, in terms of tooling and stuff that you're talking about, there are great tools out there for stuff like this. Um, uh, Zero height is a great platform for reference, for creating reference site for design systems. Um, uh, there are lots of really great like automatically generated things like KSS and like, like storybook docs that will like automatically pull comments out of your code and put them with the, with the component. So there's all sorts of like automatically generating things. It's just a matter of figuring out like what you want to set up for, for all of this. I think a KSS is the right thing, but I'm, I could be wrong about that. Um, uh, I'm not even sure how to, is it like code comment thing? Yeah. Something like that. Um, Yes, that's it. Okay. All right. So it's like kind of this like automatically doc, uh, automatically generating documentation, and if you comment a particular way, right? And so you kind of kind of follow the the guidelines, and then it'll automatically pull some of that stuff in. That's very cool. I've I've never heard of this one. This one's brand new to me. Um, but that's awesome. Like th this is this is really I, I like the idea of letting comments create some of the source of truth. Like I'm not a big fan when all you get is auto-generated documentation because it leaves out all of the context. Absolutely. Um, but I do like when you can cut down the number of hops required to create documentation. Um, so I'm, I'm a big fan of, of something like this that lets you at least get started. Um, and with that, I feel like we are in, we are in really good shape to, to call this. I mean, we've got further to go. Like there's, there's longer sure. to go down this pathway to make this fully reusable, but like, I, in the span of, of 90 minutes, um, including a, a healthy amount of like discussion about this stuff, we were able to take the kind of where I drifted the like these 
card-like implementations that had sort of appeared on my, my site over time. And we were able to turn those into something that feels more considered, more designed. And there's a long way to go. Like these dates need to be actually designed. The, these extra pieces, the buttons, all need to be actually designed. But we have so much more direction. Like even if I just shipped this, this looks more like it was intended to be put there than what I currently have where we, we sort of drifted. And so right. I think, you know, to, to your point earlier, like how far can you get in half a day? And, and I think the answer is pretty damn far. Yeah, totally. Um, and, and, you know, this really, this sells me on the idea too of like this, this limited amount of time that we spent actually thinking about something is going to influence the way that I build all of my components going forward because I'm going to be thinking about it on the same the same schedule. You know, are we doing something that is we know the outcome and we want it to look a certain way and work exactly right, or are we trying to figure out how it goes and and try to make decisions there? How do we how do we expect this to be used? Let's try to iterate this on this a few times to see how reusable it is. I mean, I it, this was this is a good one. I think this will be a good reference for me going forward to come back and, and look at what we did, watch this episode again. I hope, chat, awesome. that you feel the same way. Um, so, Dan, uh, actually, chat, if you have questions right now, ask them right now because we've got so little time left. Uh, Dan, is there anything that you want to, uh, th that you didn't get a chance to talk about or, or like continuing resources that you'd want people to check out? Um. We try to make the super friendly site uh, kind of a reference for design systems. So it's not just showcasing our work, but like, you know, there's a glossary on there because we want to help people learn about this stuff. A lot of the work that we do with our clients is not only like helping them build design systems for them, but like help them understand this stuff too, because it's their product. Like it's not ours as an agency. We're going to go away at some point. So like mm -hmm. they need to know what a component library is and what guidelines are and where do they go. And so what we try to do is like get them excited about this process. Like, you know, like you were talking about in four hours that like we've seen teams build like full apps, you know? So like mm -hmm. we teach them this concept in the morning, we break for lunch, we give, we do, we do a three hour workshop in the afternoon and then like a demo day at the end. And like people are showcasing full apps that they've concepted in those three, like that is incredible, yeah. you know? And so just like getting that excitement around this stuff, like, and then that, that none of that even, even takes into account a design system, right? So now imagine if you have a design system, you're not making this stuff from scratch. You're dropping in a button, a header, a footer, a mm -hmm. card, a background. A, like you're, you're spinning these things up really quickly. So the other part about this that we didn't really touch on that I'll touch on really quickly is that design systems are not just about the tools. A lot of it is about having a process that, makes, that takes the most advantage of those tools. And this kind of process helps that. It's like if you can figure out how to do this stuff real time, collaboratively, together if you can work together with a design system as a tool like mm -hmm. you can build so so quickly at such high quality qa time gets reduced like all of that stuff so that's why i'm so excited about design systems is that it just enables that stuff so much more quickly and cuts out a lot of the cruft that we have inserted as an industry because of you know business basically yeah. so so that's why i like design systems it helps cut through some of that stuff you know we're trying to keep updating the site we just launched a new podcast uh, yesterday um, uh, about design systems. So if anybody wants to listen to that, it's called get it out of your system. We talked to some design system leaders. Um, so basically I'm just plugging that like, this is a, this is a resource for design systems as much as it is like a place where we showcase our work. So if anybody wants to learn more about that stuff, you know, hopefully you could find some stuff on the site. They'll point you in the, in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is excellent. Um, so Dan, I am, I am sufficiently educated. I feel like, uh, chat, I hope you feel like you got like, educated, booped on the brain. I think we are in really, really, uh, really, really good shape to, to wrap this one up. Thank you so, so much for coming on today. Um, if y'all aren't following Dan on Twitter already, you definitely should be. Uh, <laughs> um, and yeah, so go, go follow Dan, go, uh, go check out super friendly and, um, also go check out the schedule for upcoming shows because we've got a lot of exciting stuff. Next week, we're picking it up with Shirley Wu. We're going to do generative data visualization. We've been working on this for a while. Uh, we're coming back to it, and it's going to be really exciting. The whole schedule is just amazing. Uh, it's going to be so much fun. Please, please, please go check it out. Uh, get, on the, get on the calendar. Make sure that you are ready to watch next time. With that, Dan, thank you again. Chat, stay tuned. We're going to raid.
and we'll see you next time. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, everybody.